Hi, my name is Joanne Ciccarello. I am a freelance photographer uh, working primarily in documentary and in photojournalism. I teach at the New England School of Photography at Boston University and at Emerson College. Um, I run the photojournalism program at New England School of Photography. I've been doing that for about eight years now and uh, recently added Boston University and Emerson to my teaching credentials. The way I got into photography um, was being born into it, actually, because my dad was a photographer. He had um, a studio, a portrait studio, in the north end of Boston uh, for about 20 years. And uh, so I spent many Saturday mornings and afternoons in his portrait studio uh, playing secretary from five years old on and um, learned about photography through him. And he was a wedding photographer, and he also uh, did a lot of portraits of uh, the families as they went through their rites of passage, whether it was their you know, graduation or confirmation, communion, engagement announcements. And so I always had an understanding of photography. Um, and I guess I always had a feel for it, even though I didn't realize I did. Um, when I got older and was time for me to go to college, I actually wanted, wanted to be a writer. I was less interested in photography because that's something my dad did. And um, I wanted to try something different. And when I was at school, um, I went to Emerson College. And I wound up taking a couple of uh, photography courses there. And in the course of doing that, um, it was right around the time that my mother got sick uh, with breast cancer. And I started photographing her at home um, as she struggled through her illness. And that um, made me realize the power of the camera because um, I was able to preserve memories of her, the last memories of her, um, through those photographs and no one else was really taking pictures at the time so uh, those photographs have become very meaningful in our family and uh, in the mid 90s uh, a group of women photographers from the National Press Photographers Association uh, got together and decided to do a project on that was devoted to women's stories and just at that time, the debate about welfare was heating up, and so we decided that welfare would be our subject, and we planned that each of us would find a family and spend some time photographing the life of that family. And I, uh, it took a long time to actually find the families. It took us about a year and a half altogether. I lucked out. I went to a meeting in Somerville where a group of social workers were getting together uh, to discuss how they were going to go about helping people with the transition um, in, from the welfare changes that were happening. And I met a woman, Bonnie Carroll, who uh, seemed to be one of the people who was in charge of what was going on or had an idea of what was going on. And I told her what I wanted to do. I wanted to photograph a family, and did she know of any families willing to do that? And she looked at me and said, come see me tomorrow. And so we made arrangements, and I followed up the next day, uh, met her at her office, and again told her what I wanted to do. And she said, well, I have a story. And that's how it began and in fact at the time Bonnie had been off of welfare for about six years so um, I was unsure whether I'd really be able to tell her story because it was in the past but um, as time went on it was apparent to me that Bonnie not only had a great story to tell but she was very open to telling her story she was ready to have it told um, she had a very powerful and, and moving story. Um, she was a woman who had succeeded um, in 
you know, getting herself off of welfare, but it, it was a 14-year process, and, and she needed that time. Um, about um, Cape Verdean culture through her camera, um, connecting with people in a way that if she didn't have a camera in her hand, she wouldn't be able to connect. Um, and uh, has really produced some wonderful, wonderful pieces that I'm gonna, are going to represent her well as she continues with the project. Uh, since the Welfare Project, I've been doing a great deal of teaching, but I'm also working on uh, a newer projects, and one of which has been a long-term project that I began in 2002, which is documenting a Cambodian family uh, living in East Boston that uh, returned to Cambodia for the first time in 24 years. They had been Cambodian refugees um, after the Cambodian Holocaust and uh, hadn't seen their homeland and hadn't seen their relatives in uh, 24 years. And they went back for the first time in 2002 and um, I followed them there and documented their first trip back. Went back again six months later when uh, their daughter Kantari Tai went back to um, assist the family in buying a truck to, and um, purchasing some farm equipment so that uh, she, could help, she could help the family's um, economy along. And uh, I'd been documenting uh, the Cambodian uh, community uh, in this area on and off for quite some time. But uh, these were my first two trips to Cambodia. And I'll be exhibiting those photographs and others at uh, the New England School of Photography uh, Center for Photographic Exhibitions in April of 2007, which is a year from now. And um, and I'm actually still doing freelance work. I'm still doing freelance assignments and I can be reached at um, my email. I don't have a website yet. I've been diligently working on it um, in between teaching assignments and freelancing and working on my personal projects. <laughs> so, um, but I can be reached. My email address is jochicarello J-O-C-I-C-C-A-R-E-L-L-O at verizon.net and my telephone number there is 617-567-9185.